Are hypersonic weapons a game changer? It all depends on which game you want to change and if hypersonic weapons perform as advertised. The United States, Russia and China are known to be heavily engaged in developing hypersonic weapons, but while the technology challenges are more or less similar, the goals of each of the players are significantly different. The United States' aim is for a new generation of conventional weapons and platforms covered by three major programs, a new advanced hypersonic weapon, AAHW, first tested in 2011, a tactical boost glide weapon, TBG, which is a rocket glider that can reach speeds of 20,921 km per hour, or Mach 20, and uses a scramjet, ramjet engine, itself based on the hypersonic test vehicle HTV-2, and an advanced full-range hypersonic engine program, AFR, which is intended as a reusable hypersonic engine that combines an off-the-shelf jet turbine engine with a dual-mode ramjet engine. The U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command working with Sandia National Laboratory is in charge of AHW development. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and the U.S. Air Force are working on the Tactical Boost Glide Program. Recommended, the world's most secretive nuclear weapons program. Recommended, the fatal flaw that could take down an F-22 or F-35. Recommended, Smith. The U.S. has a conventional prompt global strike program that will use hypersonic cruise missiles capable of striking any target in the world within an hour. Conventional or nuclear? The problem in any conventional hypersonic program is how does a defender know if the incoming weapon is conventional or nuclear? Today there is no satisfactory answer to the question. Russia, China or even North Korea or Iran may believe that a hypersonic cruise missile or space-launched glide vehicle is nuclear and may, therefore, launch their own weapons in response, especially since the chance to destroy any incoming hypervelocity weapon is poor. Even so, the U.S. is sticking to the argument that its hypersonic weapons are only conventionally armed. While the United States wants to speed up conventional weapons delivery against any target anywhere, it also will be able to overcome most aircraft and missile defense systems, even the much-ballyhooed Russian S-400. That's because hypersonic vehicles are hard to detect, hard to track, and hard to kill. Hypersonic vehicles also can operate autonomously over targets, don't need to rely on GPS systems for guidance and probably cannot be electronically jammed. The idea of overcoming missile defenses is the primary objective the Russian hypersonic program addresses, but for the Russians their hypersonic weapons are nuclear, not conventional. There are three such systems so far known, the 3M22 Zircon, or Sirkin, which is intended either for ship or submarine launch and is relatively short-range, the U-71 and U-74 for launch on ballistic missiles and the air-launched KH-47M2 Kinzel, Dagger, a high-precision air-to-surface missile with a range of 2,000 km and a claimed speed of Mach 10. The 3M22 Zircon, which is said to have a speed of Mach 7, has a range of 241 km to 434 km. It is essentially an anti-ship weapon, although it can be used against land targets. It was successfully tested in 2017 in two Kirov-class battlecruisers, the Admiral Nakamov 2018 and the Pyotr Veliki 2022, are being fitted to accommodate the Zircon in the same launchers that can also be used for caliber cruise missiles. The Zircon uses a scramjet engine after it is launched with a rocket boost. The Zircon warhead may be nuclear or conventional, although the well-regarded Strat for Analytical Group speculates the warhead is nuclear. Zircon is designed to challenge the naval power of the United States and its NATO allies and defeat shipboard defenses. U.S. slow to deploy the U-71 is a hypersonic attack aircraft and missile glide vehicle either for missiles or for Russia's bombers including Russia's proposed stealth bomber, the Tupel of Pak DA. The U-71 has a claimed speed of 11,200 km per hour and may be launched from the new Russian super-heavy MIRVED ICBM known as Sarmat Samaritan. The U-74 is a hypersonic glide vehicle also launchable from the Sarmat, with a 10,000 km range. The U-71 and U-74 are augmentations to ballistic missiles and weapons for long-range bombers that the Russians appear to believe can overcome U.S. and Allied missile defenses. While the U.S. is slow in deploying a full-scale ballistic missile defense system, it has deployed THAAD against short- and intermediate-range ballistic missiles in South Korea, Turkey and the UAE and it has put the Exo Atmospheric Ground-Based Interceptor, GBI, in Alaska at Fort Greeley and in Northern California at Vandenberg Air Force Base. 
the US and Japan have also jointly developed the SM-3 Block IIA missile, RIM-161, advanced missile which is part of the Aegis ballistic missile defense system used by the US Navy, Japan's self-defense forces and at Red Zakao in northern Poland for NATO defense.